But check this out. This is this is like again when you talk about like you know serendipitous and putting your whole belief in and willing. You know, some people call it manifesting, but I just really think it's like the the willpower. You want to you know put on size, get to the gym, to, you know, put in the work, put in the ten thousand hours. I watch that special. I see the name Marty Kulner. Cut to many years later, I start playing in the round. Marty Kulner had directed Carl in 78. It was in the round at uh, Arizona Celebrity Center in the round, like a thousand people. So I was like, I love the round. I think it's a great place to, to entertain because something I learned from my mentor, Frank Roberts, when I would do theater, do plays, he, he would say to me, um, you want to turn your back to the audience here and then take your hat off. And I would say, why would I want to turn your, my back to the audience? And he was like this old school, real dramatic drama teacher. He went, because there's nothing more powerful than the reveal. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, in the round, you're constantly, you know, revealing yourself, right? And so I start doing it in the round, cut to HBO, 2005. They give me my first HBO special. They say, where do you want to do it? I say, I want to do it in an arena. I want to do it in like 20,000 people. And I want Marty Kulner who directed Carlin in 78 in the round to come back. I met with Marty, he hit it off. He was like, I'll direct it. And I've been working with him ever since. I remember that special. Huge and I, I remember thinking to myself, how the fuck does he decide like where he's gonna fit, like face? <laughs> <laughs> like it just brings a whole yeah. different dynamic of, yeah. of comedy to Man. have a 360 degree like decision making process right, always right. going on. Well, it's like, and also I'm in Boston and I'm at the Boston Garden. You gotta remember, I was doing hell gigs for 10 years in front of fucking nobody. I was doing gigs in and around Boston in, in the 90s where it was like, um, I was driving to gigs where nobody give a, would give a shit that I'm coming and nobody gave a shit when you left. That was the early part of a comedy career. So now standing in the Boston Garden, everywhere I turned that night, I was seeing people. There's a girl I dated. There's my eighth grade teacher. That you know. There's wow. my first booker who that's gave me my first ten dollar gig. I'm not gonna lie. And that's so every time I turned, it was like. And, and I, I'm a person who looks at. Some people don't look at the audience. Some comics you'll talk to, they're like, oh, I never look. I look at fucking everybody. I look at every single person. Well, I, I know. I'm trying to. <laughs> right. No, I'm know. trying to. I'm trying to dig some fucking reality out of anything that I can. I can look at. And that night, spinning around like that. Every time I landed on somebody, I was like, I know him, I know her. That's, That's the wild. cop that pulled me over with the fuck. And, and it, was, it was amazing. That to me was like, this is gonna be the bar that for the rest of my life I try to beat. Yeah. My own, my own night is gonna be the bar. That's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, man, it was fun, bro. Yeah.